Are you one of those players that have wondered if you could make a racket lighter? Well, that's a question that I've been asked a few times before. In this video, I'll be performing racket surgery to accomplish that goal. Oh, but there's one catch. All right, let's go inside. All right, so before we get started, there are a couple of ways that I can think of that uh, you could make a racket lighter. One would be some rackets have a uh, lead tape on the pallet itself. So if you take off the grip, you could check under there if uh, your racket was weighted with lead tape. So that's a possibility, but uh, you probably want to leave the lead there if it was uh, installed by the manufacturer because it is there for a reason and it's to help make the racket feel more solid. The other way is to cut part of the bumper guard off of your racket. Now, uh, just a word of caution, I just want to make sure that uh, in this uh, surgery that I'm going to perform, you do need a sharp knife and a steady hand. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. Now, um, I have a customer, I had a customer that um, in the past, she had a uh, Prince ring racket and she had two of them and could never figure out why she always favored one of them. And it just happened to be the lighter, the one with the lower swing weight. Uh, it was also, uh, it was the same weight actually, but it was a swing weight and it was only five units of difference, but for some reason she never played with the heavier one. So I recommended that if she wanted to have me perform surgery and cut part of the bumper guard off, I could probably get that swing weight down to the other racket. And I don't have it here, but basically what I did on her racket I'll um, show you up here. I cut part of the bumper guard off, which is uh, right at the 12 o'clock area. And in my previous videos, I mentioned that's where it's gonna make the most uh, dramatic difference when you uh, either add or in this case, uh, take off weight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna perform that surgery that I did on her racket. And uh, I'm gonna be cutting the bumper guard between these two tape marks. Now. Her racket was actually easier because uh, when it was, and I did this while it was on her racket, uh, she had one of these type of bumper guards where it was slotted. So for that, there wasn't as much plastic I needed to cut. So that was a little bit easier, but on this racket, it's a solid piece of plastic. So I'm going to be cutting right through that. Um, obviously, if... Uh, you have the luxury of cutting it before um, you maybe uh, install a bumper guard or you want to just go ahead and take off the existing one it would be a lot easier to just cut it uh, right out of the package like that but um but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and start cutting this uh top portion of the bumper guard right in the 12 o'clock area I actually changed the blade on this because I wanted to make sure that I'm not going to be fighting it uh, by having to really work hard. So I want to make sure I definitely have a sharp blade. Now what I'm going to be looking at, and every racket is a little different, but I want to make sure that I can make this cut really straight. So I'm looking for a um, area on the frame where I can run the blade and make sure that I can kind of use that as a guide to make sure that the blade doesn't... Um, move up and down and um, so anyway on this particular racket this happens to be mine so I don't care but I will I will still make this procedure the way I would on a customer's racket is um, I'm gonna actually be because it has this uh, indentation right here what I am gonna be doing is running the blade right along that um, kind of this channel and trying to use that as a guide cutting the bumper guard uh, in this um, at this angle and then I'll do that for both sides and then eventually I'll come up and then cut it over the uh, I'll take off the tape and then cut it over the, uh, the outside part of the frame so I'm gonna work on the inside first and what I'm gonna do is just make sure that the racket is secure so I have it just uh, up against this table and I'm gonna go ahead and find the area on the bumper guard again that I want to start the cut um, it's always important that you uh, keep the blade always pointing away from you. Obviously, you're not going to cut towards your body. So 
Uh, I have it right here where I want it. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try and start my cut. So again, I might not be able to cut through the bumper guard on my first pass. And you know, I wanna try and get it as deep as I can but I probably will have to run it a couple of times just so I can make sure that, um, just for my own safety, I'm not just trying to um, get it all done, right? I mean, in one, one, uh, one pass. I mean, you wanna make sure that you're taking your time and doing a good job. All right, so I did a couple of times and I know it's kind of hard to see from that angle, but uh, again, I'm just trying to get it so that I can I'm trying to get a feel for this bumper guard here. All right, so I went I went through three times already. Yeah, it's a pretty thick bumper guard. So let me go a fourth time, and the cut that I'm making right now is only about an inch in uh, length. So I'm just trying to really work it and get it to a point where I'm actually through. And once I get through, I'm gonna actually be probably touching the other side of the frame, but I'm trying to get it so it's on the inside, so it's not gonna be showing. Okay, it looks like we're through now. Let me just double check with an all to make sure that it doesn't help that my frame is black and this bumper guard is black, so it's hard to see if... Yep, yep, it went through. All right, so I had to run the blade four times actually, but now that I have a better feel for what I need to do to get it through, uh, hopefully it won't take me as long. Yeah, and there's a chance if you angle the blade the wrong way, it might actually break the blade. So you want to make sure that you're doing this slowly, but yet making sure that uh, yeah, everything is... Okay, so I, I ran that blade a couple of times and it looks like I'm getting better at this. So I only had to do two passes on that one. Yeah, I can... Again, it's hard to see where my cut ended up, so I'm going to start from right there. And I'm going to use this hole as a reference, so that might help too. So one, two, three, four. So now I'm starting from that fourth hole. And I'll try and get it over to the, uh, the sixth hole. So just go a couple of holes at a time. So what I'm doing is I'm making the initial cut and then on my second pass, just making sure I insert the blade into that same cut, obviously. So, all right, so that was two passes there. Let's see if I went and got through there. Okay, yeah, that's pretty good right there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. I start from this hole that I ended it at. And I'll go two more holes. So this frame is pretty good that it has this deep channel because in the end, uh, it'll it'll look really clean because it'll be kind of hidden. Uh, at least that's what I'm hoping it'll look like. Uh, some frames are more, a little bit flatter and doesn't have this deep channel so it might be a little bit more exposed. All right, got all the way through there. So I got two more holes to go. And this last two will bring you up to the other tape on this other side. Yeah, I'm trying to keep my fingers away from that blade, my, my other hand away from holding it there so in case I slip I don't want that to be in the way yeah this sharp blade is really helping because it's coming right through there all right so yeah 
that looks like we got all the way through. So now I'm gonna make a cut from inside that channel and come up. So I'm just gonna turn this around. And again, I always wanna make sure the blade is facing away from me in case it does slip. And this one, I'm gonna just put some pressure and just kind of move it down and see if that does a trick right there. Yep, oh, it just popped right off. Okay, I wasn't expecting that, but that was good. All right, so on this side, again, I'm gonna just try and make sure that blade is facing away from me. And do what I did on the other side. fingers keep wanting to go in front of the blade but I have to remind myself to keep my hand away from it okay all right that did the trick right there okay so this is what I removed this uh, piece right here and so far this is what it looks like on that side all right but what I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to repeat the process for the other side now and uh, and then I'll come back to you. All right, so I removed the second uh, side of that bumper guard. So I have these two pieces here and it's about four and a half inches in length. And this is what it looks like so far, the cut two sides of the frame there so what I'm gonna do now is take off this tape because what I'm gonna do is uh, I don't want to well I'll show you when I take it off I'm not gonna just leave it like this because um, all right yeah I'm not gonna leave the cut the way it is right here it's just at a straight uh, 90 degree angle right there what I am going to do is cut it so that it's angled where it's uh, going to be angled um, this way. Oh, okay, I just was using a knife. That was close. Anyway, um, anyway, I'm going to cut it at an angle so then that way there's less chances of the um, bumper guard catching on anything. So I'll go ahead and do that on the four corners right there at about a 45 degree angle. And I'm just going to place it on the bumper guard and just kind of push it up and down. Uh, back and forth rather and just try to get that to come off like that and so there's a little triangular piece that I just took off right there and I'll do that for all four corners When I was cutting that uh, second side, I actually did a little bit faster because I, just, I got a better feel for how much pressure and how to cut through that a little bit uh, easier. So yeah, it took me one pass and the second pass just uh, got the edges, the parts that I didn't really cut off. So it wasn't um, as time consuming. All right, so I cut off those four corners and uh, bring it up here. Hopefully you can see it well enough in the, so you can see how the uh, these corners are angled. So when you run your hand over it, it doesn't feel like it's gonna catch as easily uh, because this, this part of the bumper is gonna be left like this. Earlier, I forgot to take the initial swing weight because I wanted to see what kind of difference removing the bumper guard at just that 12 o'clock area would make. So I uh, went ahead and scotch taped that piece back on there. And I believe it's supposed to be at 309 from um, what it was before. 
from what I can recall, but I'm just going to go ahead and just uh, confirm that reading and make sure. Yeah, so that's at 309. Yeah, so it's at 309, so I just wanted to make sure. So now I can go ahead and take off this, uh, these pieces that I removed just a little while ago. And this is the one at 12 o'clock. And I did weigh it. it, it is about one gram. It is one gram, so uh, it should make a difference because it's, it was removed at 12 o'clock, so. So I'll take a couple readings just to make sure. Uh, that came out at 303. And that one's at 303, so we'll go with that. So it did bring the swing weight down to, uh, I mean down by six units. So already that's a, that's a difference so, that some people can feel. And so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and remove the rest of the bumper guard and again, to see what kind of difference that would make. All right, so the bumper guard is fully removed and I'll provide a picture so you can see it a little bit better. But you'll notice on this picture that there's uh, those three white triangular uh, part, parts where the paint came off. And unfortunately, that's when I used the knife to try to angle the cut on the bumper guard. So what I would do if that happened is I would fill it in with some touch-up paint. Uh, you can use a Sharpie pen if that's all you have, but I have this uh, opaque uh, paint marker that works really well. So it's good for uh, touching up uh, frames. And uh, my, my racket is a, a matte finish, so this might be actually a glossy finish, but again, it does take away uh, making it as noticeable so I'm just touching up that uh, triangle areas that was uh, white because of paint chipped off. And I'm just filling in the, those areas right there. And I do use this to touch up rackets that are really dinged up, uh, especially if there's paint chips. And uh, I'm not gonna bother <laughs> touching up the paint where I actually scraped it because it's just gonna keep doing that. But uh, looking at this frame, I'll go ahead and touch up another area. So maybe you can see what that looks like now. See those paint chips? And I'll go ahead and just touch up right in those couple of areas right there. All right, so you can check out this picture to see what my touch up paint job looked like when I uh, painted over those chipped areas of my racket. And so now I'm gonna take the swing weight to see what the difference is. Remember, it started off at 309. That was the initial reading with the bumper guard. And then when I removed the two pieces at 12 o'clock, that brought it down by six units, which was at 303. So I'm gonna do a couple readings to make sure that uh, it comes out. And uh, I got 295 on that one. And we got 295. So. That brought it down another eight units. So that's a total of 14 units after I removed the entire bumper guard. And when I weighed it, it's, uh, it was uh, three grams of uh, weight. So you can see that if you remove the entire bumper guard, and if you don't mind having a racket that's bumper guardless, uh, you can make a racket lighter and reduce the swing weight. You probably figured out by now what that catch was. And yes, you're correct. If you don't mind your racket head being exposed because of the fact that there's no bumper guard, which would allow your racket to wear, then this last resort procedure might be for you. Thanks for watching. Happy customization and let your strings play.